distinguished audience, dear colleagues, I'm very honored to be here today and I'm very, it's a pleasure for me to see you all in person uh, here at the Munich Security Conference. And I was asked to talk about cybercrime and I can uh, talk to you about it for hours, but I will limit my time. The threat uh, for cybercrime, um, it evolves and it evolves uh, rapidly. Rapidly in uh, increase in damage, in scope and in scale. And the widespread abuse of um, privacy enhancing tools has really lowered the risk for detection. We say uh, cybercrime is also used as crime as a service model. And this means that um, criminal organizations hire cybercrime specialists to do their business. It's a prominent feature of the cyber uh, criminal underground community, and it is a cross-cutting facilitator throughout the cybercrime sub-areas. The availability of exploit kits of malware services not only serves criminals with low technical skills, but it also makes it difficult for the law enforcement and the justice community to be more efficient in the fight against cybercrime and the abuse of cybercrime. And it creates a lot of uh, challenges. That's why we always have to reinvent ourselves and we have to uh, try to find creative manners, manners how to deal with it. Multi-layered extortion schemes have become a basic supply in ransomware operations. Information is sold on criminal markets and forums, and this enables social engineering and intrusion to victim systems. That's why you can have the impression that the mail you are receiving, the phishing mail you are receiving, that it's from somebody who knows because they bought information on the social media forums. The threat from cyber-dependent crimes such as malware attacks, hacking, and denial of service attacks has been increasing in number and also in the sophistication of attacks, causing significant financial losses to businesses, to private citizens, and uh, to the public sector. And uh, non cash payment fraud and cyber scams are well-established criminal activities targeting the EU already for decades. Phishing and social engineering, they remain the main vectors of payment fraud and they increase both in volume and in sophistication. About online sexual exploitation, we see that there is an increase of online sexual exploitation over the recent years. In addition, the crime remains underreported and many victims remain unidentified and the abusers remain undetected because uh, the level of reporting is still very low. Ransomware also remains uh, underreported despite the fact that the attacks are growing in number, in scope, and in severity. And why do we have so many ransomware attacks? There are three key features that are coming together and that provide the opportunity and also the motive for the cybercrime criminals. First of all, we have the digital environment. This makes it easier for cybercrime criminals to make use of because they can stay more or less anonymous and they can go for anonymous payments. That's the second feature. And the third feature, data, is the new gold. And when you have the data, you have the ability to ask money. So the digital environment, together with the anonymous payments, together with the data which uh, goes to financial gains, are very important uh, features and create the opportunity and the motive for cyber criminals. And it's not easy to work on one of the three or to get rid of one of these three key uh, elements in cybercrime because it's part of our lives. What we also see nowadays is uh, that uh, cybercriminals, they organize their business in an economic way. 
so they are more calculated about their uh, target selection. And you might think that um, they want to, um, to go for the high value economic sectors. This is not the case. What we see now is that um, most targeted are small and middle firms because they do not have the big experts in cybersecurity and they have vulnerabilities in the systems. And cyber criminals, they focus on the vulnerabilities in the systems and on businesses that are not so well protected. So we see at this moment that these small and middle businesses are at risk more than before, and it's not anymore about uh, the high value attacks on uh, uh, high, uh, on uh, very big firms, because they have in place a good, normally a good cyber security uh, system. So you can be sure that also cyber criminals, they make a tough assessment about who will be our, ne our next uh, target. Um, and many of the threats in the cybercrime landscape are, of course, aggravated by growing crime as a service market on the dark web. And nowadays, uh, to go on the dark web, you do not have to be specialized in it anymore. Because if you go on Twitter or on Telegram, you can find a link that gives you access to the dark web and to everything you can buy and you need on the dark web as a criminal. For instance, the Killnet group, they use the Telegram channels and the anonymous uh, groups, they use uh, most of the time Twitter to find their access uh, to the dark net. Uh, on the dark net, of course, you find the illegal products and services uh, like drugs, weapons, uh, child pornography, stolen data and identities, which you need, uh, as well as services for committing cybercrime. On the dark web, uh, the dark web is also very important for sharing of knowledge and expertise uh, for criminals. So you have really training schedules on the dark web uh, for criminals in uh, cybercrime. And uh, the dark web users, they continue to improve their operational security by abusing the end-to-end -end, uh, encrypted communication services and the cryptocurrencies. Uh, for instance, uh, dark web users are increasingly making use of uh, Telegram and Wicca as their communication channels because this is about encrypted communication and it's not accessible uh, for the authorities. Ladies and gentlemen, how do we have to combat these forms of cybercrime? It is a cross-border team effort. At Europol, uh, we are um, convinced that cooperation and sharing of information is key in this area. Nobody can tackle this crime alone. You have to work together, not only in the law enforcement and the justice authority, but also with the private sector, also with academia, and certainly with the cybersecurity uh, community. Um, and cross-border cooperation, I can tell you, is the raison d'etre of Europol. We are a network organization. We have to uh, interact with civil society, with political authorities, with the law enforcement community, of course, but also with the sets, the certs in the different countries, um, with other uh, agencies like Interpol and other law enforcement agencies in the EU uh, and beyond. And we believe that no single act no single community, no single nation can face the threat uh, of cyber criminals alone. Each of us has a complementary role and we have to define this complementary role. Who has to do what in uh, the cycle? We launched uh, 10 years ago the Cyber um, Crime Center at Europol, and we strive to have a close cooperation with the community, with the industry, with academics, and we uh, did set up the cybersecurity incident response team. Formally, this is reflected in three advisory groups. We have seniors, we work together with senior experts from the telecom sector, from the internet uh, security sector, and from the financial sector because the financial sector to us is very important. We can learn a lot uh, from them. For instance, the approach, know your customer. Also in the cyber world, we should know our customers. So we have to reflect how can we implement good practices from the financial sector, also in the digital world and in the cyber uh, security sector. 
We also see now with the war uh, in Ukraine, the Russian aggression, that blurring of the lines, uh, as you mentioned it in, in uh, the title here, between defense, between law enforcement and the civil uh, cybersecurity uh, competences is there. It's a big reminder to all of us to reflect on what is our role. What, have, what do we have to do as sector to protect the digital environment? Because it's what we want. We want a physical, safe and secure world, but we, we also want a digital, a digital uh, secure environment for legitimate businesses and for citizens. Everybody needs to feel also uh, safe and secure when you go uh, on the internet and when you go into the digital uh, environment. With our cybercrime center, you mentioned already our um, big operations like Emotet, uh, Limit, and um, uh, Trojan Shield. Also related to cybercrime, we have big operations. We had the Emotet takedown in 2021, and uh, the most recent operation was a takedown of the Hive ransomware last month. 16 agencies and 13 countries were involved, so you can imagine that we need a lot of coordination between all these uh, law enforcement agencies, security services, and uh, justice authorities. And we do this uh, through the GCAT, the so-called GCAT. It's a joint community of experts linked to the cybersecurity from all over the world, who are in one office at Europol and who monitor, in fact, what is going on from a cybersecurity level. When you see in Australia that there is a new ransomware, immediately you can be clear to the whole of the cybersecurity community and the cybercrime community uh, to spread, in fact, the world so that in each country they can have a look at do we have also this problem and how will we tackle the, the, this problem. We cooperate. It's a cooperation platform. It's 24-7. It's monitoring of the cybersecurity incidents, but it's also about taking action and setting up uh, big operations related uh, to cybercrime together with member states. So high-profile cases are always supported uh, by Europol um, against uh, ransomware actors and the development of the inter international ransomware response model to enhance the impact of the law enforcement uh, approach on the overall ran ransomware ecosystem. What we also see is uh, prevention and support to victims of uh, ransomware that remains uh, essential. Um, in the operation against the HIVE uh, ransomware, we identified the decryption keys and we shared them with the victims of this uh, group and helping them to regain, to access their data without payments uh, to the cyber criminals. That is the big aim of the operations uh, we manage. Um, we invest in pan-European uh, prevention, in, in awareness, and in victim mitigation efforts. And for that, working with industry in, and academia is key, and that is why we have these advisory groups. We also have the No More Ransomware campaign. I don't know if you are aware of that. We did set it up with uh, the Dutch authorities. Uh, the No Ransomware campaign is translated in 38 languages, but sometimes in uh, the tackle against ransomware, it's about basic stuff. Do you speak the language? Most of the time it's in English. You also need uh, to spread uh, the, the, the message in different languages. It's a public tool. Um, you can download it, and it has uh, 140 decryption tools you can use for free when you are a victim to see if you can decrypt uh, the data uh, that they took away from you. And we estimated to have saved 1 billion uh, euros in ransomware demanded by hackers. I focused on ransomware, but what about the future? Um, we need to keep up pace with everything. So we invest a lot in new tools, um, tools for the law enforcement community, tools for the justice authorities. That's why we work closely together with the private sector and with academics, um, academics to make sure that innovation is in the heart of the organization and that we are up to date with the tools uh, that we have to use. We invest in skilled people 
in expertise, and we also try to retain them with us, because when they ha have been working on a high level in a law enforcement agency, for instance, they are very attractive for private business. So we lose our people, but on the other hand, we consider them also a bit as ambassadors for the security aspects in the different um, private uh, sector. And we have created our agency as a hub of innovation for the law enforcement community uh, because we bring law enforcement, European agencies, academia, and private sector together. We also did set up this year a digital forensic lab. Uh, we have a big decryption capacity uh, built in ISPRA. Every law enforcement agency in the European Union can make use of that. And we have a lot of other uh, possibilities with the innovation lab. We are developing a lot. So this was in short uh, what we can do, what we do, how we uh, see the threat uh, from cybercrime. And I would like to thank you again uh, for the excellent opportunity for us uh, to be here and to talk about the existing threats and uh, ransomware cybercrime, what we have to deal with and how we can deal together with this global threat. Thank you. So thank you very much, uh, Mrs. De Baller, Catherine. Uh, we are almost running out of time, yes. so uh, we don't have no more time for questions, but um, we'd like to say thank you very much for your time, and we do not want to leave you without a small birthday gift. Okay. So Peter. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, I can hand over it right now. So oh, thank you very much. Jackets? It's indeed chocolate. Thank uh, you. I know you're from Belgium, but uh, <laughs> the Bavarian chocolate can compete with the Belgian yeah. chocolate. Uh, yeah. No worries about that, and I think that gives you, you know, some power for the next days uh, yeah. to survive the Munich Security Conference. Okay. Thank you again very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.